Honestly, I wasn't really sure if I wanted to go over this information in a video, but I've decided that I do. Obviously, we know there's a bunch of content coming to Pokemon Pocket in the future. Now, just because of the nature of this topic, I think it's important to address something that you might have heard of around the community. Recently, there was someone in a Twitch chat of a fellow streamer, uh, Jeff Hoogland, and the person in the Twitch chat was claiming to be uh, an employee or someone who works on uh, Pokemon Pocket. And they were answering a bunch of questions about the future of the game, we can ignore everything this player or this user had to say about Pokemon Pocket because they are not an employee of Pokemon Pocket. They were simply abusing a tag that is assigned to game developers on Twitch TV to impersonate a Pokemon Pocket employee. Now, if you look at this screenshot, you'll see Pixel Duck is listed as the organization that they're related to, but a fellow community member reached out to Pixel Duck to find out who this Zapdos person was and if they were related to Pixel Duck in any way. Pixel Duck claims that they have no relation to the user, so it seems like the user was just a malicious actor who somehow got their hands on the game developer tag at Twitch. Twitch has since banned this user, so we can be 100% certain that this had nothing to do uh, with DNA, Nintendo, or anyone else related to Pokemon Pocket. Now, I only mentioned that because the information that that person was talking about um, had a lot of people really scared and I just wanted to make sure while we're on the topic of news uh, that we make sure that we're all on the same page about that information being fake. That user was saying things like ranked mode was eight to ten months away which sounds insane. Uh, that user said that there were a couple expansions or a couple of additional sets for the game already designed they just weren't out yet and that they would release uh, new sets frequently. I do believe that information will be true but it has nothing to do with this person being uh, working on Pokemon Pocket. It's just, it will be the case that they'll want new sets in this game. <laughs> now, while all of that information was fake, there was a decent amount of information that has been data mined since Pokemon Pocket came out. And I wanted to give it some time just in case the data miners uh, found out exactly how we obtain these cards, but uh, we don't really know yet. There are more cards to be added to the Promo A set. You'll know that Promo A is uh, where you get Potion, X Speed, Handscope, Pokedex, Pokeball, Red Card, and Professor Oak. Uh, and you can also actually get Pikachu if you're a member of the uh, Premium Pass. But there are more cards data mined as a part of this promo A set, and we're going to go over all of those cards today. We'll do a little bit of card review, and we'll talk about uh, the different alternate arts that we're getting. Now, most of these are alternate arts as opposed to brand new cards, so just keep that in mind. I actually personally don't love the thing where some promos are alternate arts and some are brand new cards. Maybe I'll feel differently about it once I see how these cards are actually implemented in the game. But for now, let's go one by one. Starting off with this alternate art for the standard version of Mewtwo. This is not a Mewtwo EX alternate art. This is just the standard Mewtwo alternate art. Now, if you actually go into your game, you can find all of these alternate arts by clicking on the card and scrolling down to related cards where you'll see the alternate art. And if you click on the alternate art, you can actually see how the card is obtained. In this case, it says it's obtained from a mission. So I assume that this mission will either be tied to the premium pass or this card will be available for free for everybody if they're willing to do this mission. Now, I expect it to be related to the premium pass. So if you're not a premium pass uh, owner, I would recommend that if you want this Mewtwo, you pick up the premium pass. The premium pass is fantastic value anyway. Everyone should probably have it if you're actively playing Pokemon Pocket. And I just want to say this alternate art looks absolutely incredible. I wish it was on Mewtwo EX because obviously Mewtwo EX uh, is the better card. Uh, but who knows? Maybe this version of Mewtwo will end up seeing a lot of play over time and you'll be able to show off this alternate art. I guess is it won't. But regardless, a cool card to have for your binders and your collections uh, for sure. Next up, we have an alternate art for Chansey. This is listed as being obtained through a wonder pick. I don't know how this would appear in a wonder pick and not in packs. Uh, they have talked in the past about how wonder picks will have unique bonuses or um, have some type of a unique interaction depending on what events are going on at any given time. I assume that this will be related to some type of event. Because it will be related to some type of event, I don't expect Chansey to appear in the game until, or I don't expect this alternate art for Chansey to appear in the game, I should say, until after the global launch. So not until after October 30th do I expect to see Chansey or this alternate art for Chansey in game. I will say the alternate art's really nice. It's going to be our first alternate art for Chansey, and I do prefer it over the base art. Uh, so if I pick up this Chansey and I ever find myself using Chansey, this will be the Chansey I use. Meowth is also listed as obtained through a wonder pick. This is a really cool alternate art for Meowth. I like the hard outlines. It makes them look very comic-y. With that said, though, 
Uh, Meowth has tough competition for alternate arts. The alternate art we already have in game, the full art for Meowth is so incredible. I can't imagine using any other version of Meowth. But if you don't own that alternate art, then this one's a cool one to have for sure. I also the base art for Meowth also looks really nice. So uh, yeah, tough competition in the world of Meowth artwork. Next up is this beautiful Butterfree. I actually love this alternate art a lot. It's listed as being obtained through a promo pack. I'm not exactly sure what that means. <laughs> uh, we don't have any promo packs in game, so I'm excited to see what our first promo pack looks like. My expectation, or I should say my guess, uh, for what promo packs are going to be like is because we have promo A as our first quote unquote promo set, that that's what we're talking about right now with potion, X speed, all that stuff. My guess is that these are all the promos we're going to get before the second set of the game, whatever the second set of the game is called. Once that releases, promo B will be released and that'll have some new trainers in it that you can acquire uh, through the similar method that you unlock uh, potion, X speed, hand scope, all those cards. And then kind of like a halfway point between each expansion, they'll do like a promo pack. And then within that promo pack is gonna be these alternate arts we talk about and some unique cards that will go over as well. Now, keep in mind, everything I just said was speculation. I have no idea how they're gonna release these cards. All I can tell you right now is that they're obtained through a promo pack. Um, but yeah, this Butterfree alternate art is awesome and it's the only Butterfree alternate art we have right now. Speaking of awesome alternate arts, the base version of Pikachu or the standard version of Pikachu has this incredible alternate art that was originally used in the TCG. And I absolutely adore this artwork. Oh, obviously Pikachu already has some really tough competition for artwork in the game. Even just the standard version of Pikachu, the base art is adorable. And the alternate art that you get for being a member of the premium pass is also adorable. Though I will say you can only ever get one copy of that alternate art. So maybe you wanna run uh, this new promo version of Pikachu because you can get multiple copies of it and have two of the same artwork uh, in your deck. And just like Butterfree, this is listed as obtained through a promo pack. So is Clefairy, who has an incredible old art here. I love the art style here. I will say though, there's a bit of a disappointment if you're going to use this Clefairy, again, also obtained through a promo pack, you kind of lose a bit of cool synergy where Clefairy and Clefable's base art in Genetic Apex looks very similar. The art styles are very uh, cohesive. So if you run this alternate art of Clefairy, which does look really beautiful, you lose out on a bit of cohesion between the Clefairy and Clefable, which uh, maybe you don't care about, but, but it's the type of thing that I would notice and I'd be like, oh, that's a bit disappointing. But yes, the new Clefairy looks really uh, pretty. We get a new Venusaur alternate art. This is also listed as a promo pack card. This is for the standard version of Venusaur. So this is not the EX version of Venusaur. And man, I absolutely love it. It looks so beautiful. I love that it's just like a random cabin in the woods, you know? I like it when card art in Pokemon, you can see like the normal world uh, around them. It makes the card feel a bit more alive rather than just being in like a random forest or whatever. It's cool that there's, you can see like the human civilization uh, and how it, it's interacting with the Pokemon. I think it's really cute. Also look at him, he's just a big EP boy. He's just eeping. This alternate art Greninja is absolutely incredible. I really like the base art for Greninja, but it turns out I like this one a lot more. So if I ever find myself using Greninja in the future, you'll definitely see me using this alternate art as opposed to the base art. It's funny that the pose he's doing is just kind of identical to the base art and it's just kind of inverted. It, like if it was inverted the other way, it would just look very similar to the pose that's in the um, the alternate art, oh sorry, the base art. <laughs> this version of Onyx looks so goofy. I feel like this art style is very uh, divisive. Like you either love this style or you hate this style. So I'm curious to see if everyone had access to both this Onyx and the base Onyx, which one they would use, but, but I think it looks cool. Bulbasaur gets a new alternate art. This guy has some tough competition with the full art Bulbasaur. So I honestly, I don't, uh, I don't think I'll be using this one. But if you don't have access to the full art Bulbasaur, this is definitely a nice alternative. But even base Bulbasaur looks really nice. So I don't know, this guy's got some tough competition. Um, it is worth mentioning, this one's also uh, obtained through Wonderpick, just like the Chansey and Meowths we went over earlier. So I again assume this will be tied to some type of event. I don't know how you would describe this art style for this Magnemite, but I really like it, it's really cute. And again, just like the Bulbasaur we went over, this is obtained via Wonderpick. So again, I assume this will be some type of Wonderpick event. Now it's time to go over the promo cards that have different functionality. So it's time for a bit of card review time and alt art review time. It's exciting to, to be able to review cards. I'm actually really excited about it. So I did this on stream as well. 
Um, let's have a look at Huanta. Huanta has 10 less health than the current Huanta we have in game, but he deals 20 more damage for the same energy cost with the downside of sometimes he will miss and deal zero damage. I feel like you're not attacking with Haunter very often. Like generally you're going to be wanting to sit in the wings for, for Gengar. So maybe there's a chance that this extra 20 damage is sometimes just a kill on something it wouldn't otherwise be. So you can push Haunter a little earlier and just hope for the 50-50 and try to just get the tempo advantage. It actually might be worth it. Uh, when I first reviewed this card, I was like, I mean, it's not worth it because of the coin flip. But if it makes a difference between a kill and not getting a kill, I think the coin flip is totally worth the risk. I actually do think that this Haunter will become the mainstay for Gengar and that the base version of Haunter will be kind of outclassed, but we will only be able to tell in due time. Uh, what, for what it's worth, I don't actually love the artwork. It's kind of goofy though, so I don't know, it's kind of growing on me. But yeah, I kind of wish that when they printed a different version of a card like Haunter, that we could swap out the artwork, like, wouldn't it be cool if I could just use my base art Haunter on this Haunter? Like, obviously, in a physical environment, you can't do that, like in the traditional Pokemon trading card game. But as long as we're in a digital environment, I, I don't see the harm of being able to do that. But I could see them having, like, a principle design philosophy that, that says, okay, we're not allowed to do that. So, yeah, I think Haunter will be good. Uh, and his alt art is cute. Uh, and in case it wasn't clear by the icon, this is a promo card not related to Wonder Pick stuff. And actually, all of these cards that are about to go over are all... Uh, promo cards. We've got this brand new Mankey, which is absolutely incredible. I'm actually really excited about this Mankey. It might be game changing for Primeape. The standard version of Mankey that we have in game right now is just kind of the baseline stats for a fighting Pokemon. 60 HP, deal 20. This one has less HP, which is a bit of a concern actually, because now quite a few things that previously wouldn't one shot it now do. But he has a 30 damage attack, which is a big upgrade. And he deals 10 damage to himself, which is a huge deal for Primeape. Because now you could evolve Mankey into Primeape and swing for 100 damage guaranteed as long as you attacked once with Mankey. This could be really important for aggressive strategies and uh, I expect this Mankey to see a lot of play. Plus, I do think his artwork is pretty cute. So even if you just use it as like an alternate art, uh, I think it works quite nicely. This Jigglypuff is crazy. 50 HP is a bit vulnerable, but a one cost colorless sing, which forces the opponent's active Pokemon to be sleep. That's actually huge. Right now, the best universal sleep we have available to us without having to commit to a specific type is Hypno, uh, which is on a coin flip, uh, but it can be used from the bench, which is nice. So it's not, Jigglypuff isn't like strictly better. There's there's pros and cons to each or either. And obviously Hypno is a psychic tech, but you can always just remove psychic energy from your, your deck and just not have to worry about the attacks. But yes, yeah, so I think a guaranteed colorless sleep will absolutely see play somewhere. I don't know where. And the artwork is super cute. So, And then lastly, we actually have a new EX card, Lapras EX at 140 HP, three cost attack that deals 80 damage. So comparable to a certain Articuno uh, that does 80 damage on Blizzard. But this effect seems more important for the types of decks that are running Articuno right now. Heal 20 from this Pokemon. This might be really strong, actually. I saw a lot of people compare this to Articuno and say it's worse than Articuno, but I actually think they're relatively comparable, and Articuno is one of the strongest cards in the game right now. There's a little bit of lost utility when you compare Lapras to Articuno because Lapras doesn't have the two-cost attack, so she does need to get to three before she can start swinging. And you assume that you're playing an honest game where you go one uh, one cost, two cost, three cost, and you don't cheat out any energy with Misty or something like that. Lapras is doing a 40 less damage over the course of the first three turns of the game compared to Articuno's 120 damage. But she does have the 20 heal, and uh, you've obviously got Misty to kind of ramp to get you there. I think there's a real world where uh, Lapras EX, uh, t times two Lapras EX, and times two Articuno is just a deck. And we no longer run the Stami that people are running in Articuno decks right now. And you just go all in on having the four huge body uh, EX Pokemon and just try to out aggro your opponent or, or out tempo your opponent, I should say, uh, with an early game Misty and start swinging for insane amounts of damage. Uh, and then Lapras can sometimes just sit in the active slot and live for a very long time because of Bubble Drain. I think Lapras is really good. Uh, and the art's pretty cute too. I like, uh, I like what they cooked up here. All right, that's everything for all of the data mined information we have to go over. Thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and I'll catch you in the next one.